Hello, it's Mr Knight here. Um, I hope that you're all doing well and um, I'm just here to provide you with a little bit of information with regards to rapid testing for staff and senior phase pupils. So you might be aware that the Scottish Government announced um, with some young people coming back into school from the 22nd of February that um, rapid testing or lateral flow tests would be available for staff and senior phase pupils. So this is just a short presentation to provide you with a little bit more information on how that's going to work. So this slide really just shares with you um, the thinking behind the lateral flow testing, who it's for and why we're actually doing it. Um, so this testing is really important for um, staff and senior phase pupils as um, obviously they could be carrying the virus into the school and potentially spread it on to other people. Um, so what has been proposed is that um, staff and senior phase pupils without symptoms can opt in to ongoing um, surveillance testing in the school for COVID-19 using a lateral flow test. So it's a really simple and quick test and will give um, staff and senior pupils a result in their own home um, within 30 minutes without having to send anything off to a lab. So the point of actually doing this testing is to break those chains of transmission by making sure that we have these tests twice a week and that we continue to follow all of the other um, guidance from the government such as our social distancing, um, wearing face coverings, booking a test if we have symptoms etc. It is important at this point to highlight that this test does not supersede the normal PCR test that you would um, book if you were displaying symptoms. So I suppose at this point I just really want to highlight if you do have any of um, the COVID-19 symptoms such as a loss or change in taste and smell, a continuous cough or the high temperature that you book a PCR test, you don't come into school um, and this lateral flow test cannot be used as an alternative to the PCR test. So this slide here um, really summarises the process of how the lateral flow testing will take place within the school. So the first area there is first of all the consent to participate. So we do need consent from both the staff and young people that they are happy to take part in the ongoing testing within the school. Once we have that consent, pupils and staff can then collect their testing kits. They then take those testing kits home, they come with instructions and those instructions will highlight how to actually carry out that test at home. You'll then wait 30 minutes and get your result. Two lines will indicate a positive result, one line will indicate a negative result. Unless that line appears at the T only, that would then be a void result, but I will go into that in a bit more detail shortly. Once you have your result, you then need to report that result, whether that be positive, negative or void. If it is a positive result, you then have to book the normal PCR test as you normally would if you had COVID-19 symptoms to confirm that it is in fact a positive result. However, it is worthwhile noting at that point, if it is a positive result using the lateral flow test, the normal processes kick in. So we would expect you to notify the school, um, to log that result on the NHS website, and we would then start that track and trace process, and your household should then isolate until you've had the result of the PCR test. If it is negative, the next step is just to take another test, probably three to four days after um, the first test that you've done, so that you're doing about two a week. These slides now basically just take you through that in a little bit more detail. Um, so as I mentioned, we need consent for you to participate first of all. So shortly, um, four documents will be getting uh, sent out to staff and pupils. There'll be a letter outlining the process for testing, a copy of the privacy notice, frequently asked questions and a consent form. And we need to you to review those and return that consent form before you can actually take part in the testing. So the eligibility for actually taking part 
is that you are asymptomatic, so you're not displaying symptoms currently. You have read that privacy notice, you have signed that consent form, and you've not tested positive with a PCR test in the last 90 days. So as I say, first step is to make sure that we get that consent. Step two, once we have that consent, we can then arrange for the collection of the test kits. So we've set up a classroom, so F204, which is our hub 204, and that's been set up as our designated collection point for test kits. A member of staff will man that and will issue you with the test kit and um, will log the serial number of the test kit that they've given you. That box contains several tests, so it will last you um, a number of tests. We're recommending that once you get down to your last test, you make sure that you come in and you collect another test kit. So basically you always have one test on standby in case you get a void result. In the first instance, I've set out the times below um, for tests to be collected. That will be reviewed as it will depend obviously upon how many people we actually have in school. So pupil collection times are Monday to Thursday, 11.15 to 11.45, or 12.15 to 12.45, and Friday, 10 to 10.30. Staff collection times are Monday to Thursday, 11.45 to 12.15, and Friday, 9.30 to 10 o'clock. And those collection times will start from the 22nd of February, which is next Monday. So once you have your test kits, you're then in the position where you can carry out your um, home test. Within the test box, the instructions with the red cross have actually been put in those boxes. Unfortunately, these are the wrong instructions um, and there was an error by the NHS when they were put in the boxes. The correct instructions are the ones on the right hand side with the green tick. These will be issued to you separately when you pick up your test. These go through step by step exactly how to carry out the test. Um, it's a really simple guide. Um, we are asking that you carry out the test first thing in the morning before coming into school as that will allow us to get the best indication if it is a negative or positive result. When pupils or staff are in school full time, we would be looking at those tests um, being carried out at two points throughout the week. So for example, if a member of staff or pupil was in school Monday through to Friday, we would possibly be asking for one of the tests on a Monday morning and one of the tests on a Wednesday or Thursday morning. Now we're in a slightly different position at the moment where some staff and pupils will be in just for a couple of days. So we're asking that you just use your judgment about the best time to actually carry out that test. So for example, if um, I am a young person and I'm going to be in school on a Tuesday and a Friday, I would do one test on a Tuesday morning and one test on a Friday morning. So it's just about using your judgment about being the way, best time to actually do that test is. So as I say, all the instructions are within that booklet and it is a step-by-step -step guide. When you come to getting your result, um, you'll see the little screen on the white test. Um, there is a C and a T marked on that test. If it's a negative result, you'll get one line at the C. If it is a void result, you'll get one line at the T, or you'll get no line at all. And if it's a positive result, you'll get two lines, one at the C and one at the T. As I have mentioned, at that point, if it is a positive result on the lateral flow test, you then need to book a PCR test um, at that point and you need to inform the school so that we can then start that contact tracing process as quickly as we possibly can. Once you have your result, whether that be positive, negative or void, you do then need to report that result. So there is a link here, um, www.gov.uk forward slash report COVID-19 result. Um, you press the start now button and it's a step-by-step um, process of putting in the school's details, your own details, and then what that result actually was. Um, it is worthwhile noting at this point for privacy that the schools are not able to actually view those um, results. Um, we only expect you to report back to us if it is a positive result, um, but there is an expectation that you do upload um, positive, negative or avoid results onto the government website. As I have mentioned, if it is a positive result, we do need to ask that you let us know so that we can start that contact 
um, tracing process. If it is positive, you do need to book that PCR test. The link is on the screen at the moment. Um, and as I have mentioned on a previous slide, this test here is not a substitute for a PCR test. So if you are displaying symptoms, you would do what you would normally do. You wouldn't come into school. You wouldn't just use one of these tests here. If you have symptoms, you don't do a lateral flow test. You book a PCR test following that link. Equally, if you have no symptoms, you do the lateral flow test and it does come back positive, you still need to isolate and book a test using the link that's on the screen. All being well, your test comes back negative. Um, you log that as I've mentioned, and then a couple of days later, again, using your judgment about the best time to do that, you would take your second test for the week. As I've mentioned, you shouldn't participate if you've had a positive PCR test in the last 90 days and make sure that you're keeping an eye on your supply so that you've always got one backup test in case it is void um, and just pop back into that collection point to pick up some more tests. Um, there is a um, support link on the screen at the moment so if there's some sort of issue such as an allergic reaction to the test um, individuals are being asked by the NHS to do what they're calling um, as raising a yellow card. So you report that at the link on the screen at the moment. Um, if it is an issue um, with the testing kit where there's maybe something missing or it's not working, there is a contact number on the screen. If it is medical um, attention that you need, of course, make sure that you use the normal routes that you would. On the next screen, um, there is a step-by-step -step video that will actually show you um, how to conduct the test. You might choose to watch that video rather than looking through the booklet. But if there are any questions, um, please feel free to get in contact with me at the high school. Um, and uh, you can get me on 0131 654 or by email in the school at dalkeith.hs at midlothian.gov. UK. Thank you. Many people with COVID-19 have mild or even no symptoms, but can still spread the virus. With regular self-testing, we can slow the spread and help protect the most vulnerable in our families and communities. Please read the instructions in your kit before you take the test, as they may vary slightly depending on the model. Prepare yourself for the test. Make sure you haven't had anything to eat or drink in the last 30 minutes. If you have, you should wait until 30 minutes have passed before doing the test. You're going to swab your throat and your nose. If you've had a nosebleed within the last 24 hours, swab the other nostril or wait 24 hours. If you have a nose piercing, swab the other nostril. If you have a piercing on both sides, remove the piercing on the side you're going to swab. Make sure you use a separate test kit for each person. Use the items in the test kit once only. You cannot reuse them. If there is a reason you cannot take a throat swab, such as you've had a tracheostomy, swab both nostrils instead. Prepare your test area. First, clear, clean and dry a flat surface to place the test kit on. Wash your hands for 20 seconds using soap and warm water or use hand sanitizer. Now dry your hands. Your kit should have these six items. A swab inside a sealed wrapper, an extraction tube holder, an extraction tube, an extraction buffer sachet, the test strip, and a waste bag. If you're doing more than one test, either for yourself or for someone else, ensure you clean the surface and wash or sanitize your hands between each test. Set up the test. Take the test strip out of the foil pack and place it on the clean, flat surface. Once opened, start the test within 30 minutes. Carefully twist or snap open the extraction buffer sachet being careful not to spill any of the fluid. Now open the extraction tube and pour in all the fluid.
close the extraction tube cap and place the fill tube in the extraction tube holder. Before you take the sample, blow your nose. Wash and dry your hands again or sanitize them. Remove the swab from the packet. Make sure you do not touch the soft part of the swab. Take the swab sample. Most people find this a bit uncomfortable. This is totally normal. If you've had your tonsils removed, do this where your tonsils would have been. It is important that the fabric end of the swab does not touch your teeth, tongue or gums. Holding the swab between your fingers, open your mouth wide and rub the fabric tip over both tonsils or over where your tonsils would have been if you've had them removed. Do this firmly four times on each side. Use a mirror to help you do this correctly. Remove the swab carefully without touching your teeth, tongue or gums. Using the same swab as you did in your mouth, you now need to swab the inside of your nose. If you can't swab your child's throat, you can do both nostrils. Making sure you don't touch any other part of your face, insert the same swab inside of your nostril until you feel resistance. This is about an inch in an adult, it will be less in a child. Roll the swab firmly inside of the nostril, making 10 complete circles. Remember, it's really important that the fabric tip doesn't touch anything apart from the inside of your throat and nose. Process the swab sample. Pick up the extraction tube, open the lid, and place the fabric tip of the swab in the tube so that it is in the fluid. Press the tip against the edge of the extraction tube with force whilst rolling it around the tube for 15 seconds. It is important to mix thoroughly. Pinch the tube as you remove the swab to make sure that all the fluid is removed. Press the nozzle cap tightly onto the extraction tube to avoid any leaks. Gently squeeze the extraction tube to place two drops of fluid on the specimen well marked S on the test strip. Make sure that you are dropping fluid and not an air bubble. Set a timer for 30 minutes. Make sure the test strip is left flat on a clean surface. Read your result. It is important to wait 30 minutes before you read your results. You'll see one line in the test after 20 or so minutes, but you must wait 30 minutes to find out your proper result. If after 30 minutes you still only have one line next to C, your result is negative. If you have two lines, then your result is positive. If your result is positive, you and your household must self-isolate following government guidelines. If you do not have any lines or just one line at the bottom of the display at T, then your test is invalid. After an invalid test, you must take another test. Make sure you follow the instructions carefully when you take another test. Negative results do not rule out a COVID-19 infection, particularly in the early stages of infection. If you have had recent exposure to potentially infected individuals, along with any symptoms consistent with COVID-19, you should seek medical advice, even with a negative test. Report your result. It's really important that you report a positive result to the NHS. You should also report negative and invalid results. This allows the NHS to monitor the spread of the virus, support communities across the UK, combat the virus and save lives. You can also find out more about the result and what you need to do. You can report your result online at www.gov.uk forward slash report COVID-19 result. Once your test is complete, place all the used test kit contents in the waste bag provided and place in your household waste.